What's up, everybody? Okay. Here we go. We're back. We're talking about the Constitution, because... Uh, I don't really know why. I'm losing purpose here. We're almost done. Today, we're talking about Article 3 and Article 4. And then all we have left is 5, 6, 7, and 27 amendments. It's going quick. So, let's see here. We're going fast today. Article 3, Section 1. I don't actually know what it says. I got my notes. Ah, we got courts. Article 3 establishes the courts of the land, making the Supreme Court the Supreme Court the best one. And then we have any other inferior courts which can be established if Congress wants them to. And so we have a structure now that's been around for a long time, but it's been put into place for a reason. Maybe not for a reason, but what am I saying here? It's just been around a while. That's all. That's it. That's all there is. Uh -huh. Judges get to hold office during good behavior, whatever that means. I don't know. And they get paid. I'd have to look up how much. I don't actually know. But they can't have their salary changed while they're in service. So if you want to change the amount that a court, justice, judge, what? That a judge gets paid, it won't really affect that judge themselves. Unless they resign or die, then it won't affect them at all because it won't be a judge anymore. Section 2. It creates the jurisdictions for the court. So each court has an area that it sort of deals with. And the Supreme Court, well, it's the best court in the land, doesn't just deal with everything. Right? There's a hierarchy of things. And so they get to deal with things like broken laws under the Constitution or laws in general, treaties, cases that happen between states, on the ocean, between two or more states, between citizens of states, between citizens of the same state. It's just, it's just a lot of like, hey, this is covering all of our bases so there are no loopholes, right? So that way, a person in Massachusetts can't offend somebody in New York, and it's like, oh, well, the Constitution says that we can't do anything about it. Ugh. They just eliminate all of that. It creates a pretty reasonable jurisdiction. So it sets what the court's sandbox is and when and where they get to play. Section 3. Treason! So, it exists, we have definition for it in Section 3, since the courts get to deal with it. And it's if you engage in war against the United States or let their enemies essentially tell you what to do or give them aid or comfort. So, no pats on the head, right? Can't be like, oh, poor enemy. No. It's illegal. And so, even though we, it's a bit vague what comfort really means, right? You still need at least two witnesses or a confession in order to get a treason verdict. Article 4. Section 1 is worded kind of a confusing manner, to be perfectly honest. I read it and I was like, I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, what we can get to, though, digging through, is that really all we need to know is that we're starting to talk about the states now and how they interact with each other. So, basically, Section 1 will, in a really legalese sort of way, say that laws that are apply in one land, a state apply in another state. So, for instance, if you get married in Massachusetts and you run away over to New York and you're like, I'm not married because no one there knows you, you're still married. The marriage in Massachusetts still counts in New York because we're all part of the same country. And that's the basic bottom line about what Section 1 is getting at here. Section 2, citizens get the same federal protection rights no matter where in the country they are. And if you're charged with treason, a felony, or other crime and try to run away to another state, they can just hook you back. Be like, no, 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 no. You're back here now. And try you in the state that you convic convicted your crime, that you committed your crime. Section 3. We can get new states if we want to. Right? That's how we're up to 50. Started with 13. But there's some rules. A state can't just split itself in two and be like, ah, yes, I would like to be two states now. There we go. Uh, it's not that simple. You need the state legislatures to vote to approve that. And Congress has to approve it. And so with every new state coming into the Union at any time, the state has to say, hey, yes, we want this. And then Congress has to go, cool. And if they don't, it won't happen. Oh, look at this. A short one this week. Section 4. The federal government's job is to guarantee each state's Republican form of government and provide them protection from threats foreign and domestic. That's their job. It's what they do. That's all today, folks.